Poland, 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 how did I ever forget you? Just when I thought we covered all the major European countries, you guys remind me that we haven't done Poland yet. I felt extra bad about that because when I started reading Poland's scary stories, I quickly realized that they have some of the most twisted and dark I've seen in this series so far. Let's see if you can handle them. My name is Danny Burke and this is the top 10 scary Polish urban legends. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Obra River Monster. The Obra River in West Poland is picturesque on the surface. It's a popular place for canoeing and kayaking. However, under the surface there lies a creepy urban legend. They say a monster lies down there and has done for generations. Over the years many witnesses have reported seeing a giant snake-like creature in the lakes connected to the river. They say they've seen it surface to attack ducks, swans and even small dogs which are often dragged underwater never to be seen again. Others say they've seen the snake approach boats and try its luck with them showing it isn't even afraid of us humans. It's been compared to the Loch Ness Monster with some people saying that it's actually the last survivor of an ancient reptilian creature. Of course that would mean that it would have to be near enough immortal by this point so perhaps there isn't just one but a number of different Obra monsters all lurking below the waters waiting until their numbers are strong enough to return to the surface. Next up on number 9 now we have the Rosalka. This is a Polish tree spirit traditionally thought to inhabit the woods and lakes of western Poland. Rosalka were thought to be the spirits of murdered girls. They yearn for continued existence but for that they need the energy of the living. So so, at certain times of the year, they will climb out of their lakes and sit on the branches of willow and birch trees. There, they wait for a man. He will become infatuated with the undead temptress and follow her back into the water. She will then entangle him with her long hair and pull him to the bottom to drown. In the olden days, it was said that the Rosolka really didn't like women, probably out of jealousy. Women would hang scarves and linen in the forest to appease the Rosolka. If you're planning a trip to Poland and want to avoid these, they are said to become most dangerous around early June. June, especially during a time known as Rosolka Week, where the spirits leave the woods and cause crop damage, illness and death across the land. Moving on to number 8 now, we have the Striga. This is a female creature who feeds on human blood. Every country we've looked at seems to have a vampire legend. This is Poland's. The Striga's origin is connected to the belief of duality of the souls. A common explanation is that most of the time humans are born with a single soul. I mean, how could they not? right? Well, apparently sometimes, very rarely, a person is born with two. They may live a totally normal life, but when they die, only one soul leaves the body. The second gets trapped inside the body, keeping it alive in an undead sort of way, more vampire than human. They are now a striga, bound to living between the spheres of life and death until the second soul leaves too. At first, they may look quite human, but as time goes on, they change. They may start out getting grey or blue skin. Then their features become bird-like. They grow claws, bird eyes and have feathers growing off their back. During the day they sleep in their own graves and then come out at night for a hunt. They need human blood to survive and will suck it out of their victims while eating their entrails. I know. Apparently you can tell if someone is going to turn into a streaker if they are born with an extra appendage of sorts. Two rows of teeth, two hearts or just any other anomaly like that. Just warning you all. Next up at number 7 now we have the Ogniki. These are demons which guard the graves where forgotten treasures are hidden. In life, they used to be humans, but only a specific kind of person becomes an Ogniki. It's not necessarily evil people, but deceitful ones, people who are fraudulent or unjust to others. The Ogniki live in marshes and swamps. They are hostile to people. If lost wanderers reach the areas haunted by the Ogniki, they are led into the most dangerous parts of that swamp and drowned in a pool of slime. People are drawn to them by the lights they leave flickering over the swamps. They are said to be hypnotic in nature pulling them in. The lights sometimes appear as a pair of hands holding either a candle or an indescribable light source. Either way, the light will always be where the treasure is not. You see, the Ogniki are greedy spirits who try and draw humans away from the treasure they are protecting. This is a reflection of the greed they had in life. Next up at number 6 now, we have the Zmori. These are evil, half demonic creatures that feed off human life force. But there is a catch. They can't actually kill their own prey directly. Polish mythology describes them as the wandering souls of those living people who were lost in a deep sleep state or suffering from a severe disease. The souls left the body as it began to fail. Now they remain
remain between the world of the living and the world of the dead. They enter people's houses at night, seeking the vital human energy they need. They sit on people's legs or chests as they sleep, causing sleep paralysis or breathing problems. That's when they feed on your life force. The Zmori may be spirit-like, but they are more physical than ghosts. It's said that they can't actually pass through physical objects like doors or walls, but they don't really need to though. The Zmori can take on any form they like. They can become as flat as a pancake to slide under your door, or as thin as a hair to slide right through your lock. They prefer to stay invisible, but some can take the form of a human where they would have a semi-transparent body. Attacking humans is their ultimate goal, but they will also go for animals too. They say the Zmori like horses for their strength. You can tell a horse has been visited by one because it will be sweating and visibly exhausted in the morning. If you ever have a morning like that, maybe you have been visited too. Next up, round number five now, we have the Bogniki. These are female personifications of the wild forces of nature in old Polish mythology. They are seen as demons that only have two approaches to us humans, neutral or hostile. There are no friendly ones. They attack humans. Specifically, they attack women during childbirth. That's right, when a woman is at perhaps her most vulnerable point, giving birth to a human life after hours of labor and nine months of carrying, that's when the Bogniki attack them. That gives you guys an idea of the moral compass of these creatures. They replace the newborns with changelings. They look like humans, but they are actually infant Bognikis. Although they need and prey on us, they aren't usually found in towns or cities, preferring instead to dwell in swamps, lakes, rivers, forests, woods, and mountains. Some say the Bogniki are the spirits of women who died in childbirth, committed suicide, or even murdered a child. They say that witches can summon Bogniki and pray to them to get help. If witches pray to you, you're probably not a good thing. Moving on to number four now, we have the Polondicha. They are said to be the demons of young women who died before, during, or shortly after their wedding. They are the lost souls of maidens who were not able to have the happy marriage they wanted because death snatched it away from them. They are said to appear around noon on the hottest days of summer, wandering in the fields of golden crops. Now if you see them from a distance, they may look pretty normal. Beautiful women, dressed in blinding white clothes, their hair loose, and sometimes wearing a flower crown. However, when you look closer, you can see that something is not right. Their teeth look like steel. They have a swollen tongue and their skin looks rotten and burned. They hold a sickle and ambush people from behind. They may ask riddles or questions for their own amusement, but if you fail to appease them, they will attack. The victim is tortured until they are maimed or even killed. The most common form of death is by the heat that they radiate with. Meeting one can cause heavy headaches, heartaches, paralysis, or loss of consciousness. Parents often fear their children who play alone in crop fields will be kidnapped by them or permanently blinded. Oh, and she often appears with whirlwinds and seven black dogs accompanying her. That descriptions continue, and trust me, none of them get any nicer. Moving on to number three now, we have the Bieda. This is a demon whose name translates to poverty. It's quite a fitting name for this immortal being that brings misfortune, misery, and grief to everyone who's near her. She is tall and lean, described as twig-like and covered in old rags. She wanders the earth looking to feed on a very specific source of nourishment, human happiness, and luck, kind of like a Dementor. If you've been lacking some of those in your life recently, perhaps you have a Bieda nearby. When she finds a target, she settles down in a nearby house. You'll know that this has happened by a series of disasters or general troubles occurring in your family. She can turn herself into any object or animal. That makes her a lot more difficult to look out for. Basically, she could be anything new in the environment. People say to watch out for birds like sparrows or swallows who have built their nests under the roof but don't seem to be laying any eggs like normal birds. Or perhaps lone mouses who seem to be smarter than cats. Bieda is an immortal being and cannot be killed. If you try and burn or sink the object that she turns into, she will escape, let out a loud screech, and then turn into a completely different object, one that is even harder to find. They've been doing this for hundreds or thousands of years, which means the object they hide as are now probably almost invisible to humans. Perhaps one of them is in the room with you right now. Have you noticed anything new? Next up at number two now, we have the Biali Zimni Ludzi. In English, they are called the White Cold People. They are perhaps the most mysterious creatures on this list. They are basically an illness in human form. They are tiny, covered in unhealthy looking skin, and scuttle around in a feverish insect kind of way. They can be the size of your hand or as small as the head of a pin. They are always bad 
bad omens, are able to haunt and prey on people. They live in forests and swamps and love to ambush travellers from a hiding place in a puddle by the side of a road. Once they have selected you as a target, they will hide in your clothes and wait for you to fall asleep. Then, very quietly, they will climb onto your face and enter your body through your mouth or your nose. Once they're in your respiratory system, they will infect you with various hard to cure illnesses. When you wake up, the first sign of a visit will be a high fever. It was thought that to cure this, the victims were forced to drink strong spirits mixed with powdered dried eyes of a crayfish or eat a stalk from an old broom on a slice of bread and butter. Don't ask me why, I didn't make the rules. Another curing ritual involved drilling a deep hole in a tree trunk, breathing through it and then clogging the hole with a wooden stake. This was supposed to imprison the exhaled demons inside the tree trunk. They always find a way to get out again. And finally number one now, we have the Chernobog. We've undoubtedly saved the best till last with this one. Some say the Chernobog is the king of monsters, others call him the black god. Some simply say he is the devil. I'm sure you can already see what kind of being you're dealing with here. He is the source of all evil in the world and enjoys nothing more than stealing and devouring souls. This lord of hatred causes calamity and disaster, bringing bad luck and misfortune wherever he turns. Unlike a lot of creatures we've talked about on this list, the Chernobog doesn't have any real desire or motive to do the evil things he does. He just loves his spot as the most despicable creature in the world. You'd think that with such a powerful and malevolent being, there would be a lot of literature about him, but relatively speaking, there isn't. It's almost as if people in bygone eras were scared to even mention him in writing. All we have are shadows, rumours and clues to his truly terrible nature. In the past, ancient Slavic people used to spit curses into their bowls at feasts in the hope of keeping the Chernobog at bay, but it was only a hope for true evil is a difficult thing to stop. Sorry to end on such an intense line there, but hey, I think this was a pretty intense video. I think Poland has some really dark legends going around, which is fascinating to hear about, but yeah, hope you're all okay in Poland. Let's head somewhere else in the world for our next video in this series. There's still so many countries around the world with scary stories we haven't heard of yet. Let me know what you want in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. As always, guys, my name is Danny Burke, and I will see you all in the next one. <laughs>